Hey guys, it's uh, Kenneth here on a Monday morning. Um, it's a public holiday here in England, or a bank holiday, and um, today I'm going to be making a cold frame or a mini poly tunnel. Our garden's, you know, big enough to have a poly tunnel in, and we've got loads of space. But if you're, you know, pressed for space, you don't have a, a big garden. Having a, a small poly tunnel, uh, you know, will help. Um, Give you a place where you can put all your seedlings to protect them from the frost and the cold um, if the season's still still quite early so you know in, in early spring or late spring um, you can buy them for about 50 pounds you know all the way up to 100 but i thought i would make them or make a couple because um, they're quite easy to make um, it's a lot cheaper although you know you do it does take a bit of time um, i think it's worth it really just to to give it a go so i've already prepped all the material i've cut the pieces of uh, wood that i need and got some pipes that I'm going to use for the hoops. You know, as I'm going through, I'll explain to you what I've done. Um, in terms of the sizes I've used, it's going to be um, a meter by 500. I think it's a meter by 500. Um, you can use do any size you want, really, but the principles behind how I've done it is probably something you could transfer to, to any size. So that's the basic layout of the frame. Um, ignore the pallet, that's not actually part of it. So I'm just using that to work on. Um, so there's basically an inner ring and an outer ring. Um, you don't have to have the outer ring, but the reason I've got that is once you, you stretch the polythene sheeting um, over your hoops, um, you can secure it with some staple, like a staple gun or some, um, some nail tacks into the inner frame. And then once that's secure, you then take this outer frame and put that, um, like screw that or nail that to the inner frame. Then you can trim the excess polythene sheeting off and it's just a bit more secure, um, you know, it's the same principle on our on our big poly tunnels. There's a similar kind of system to keep the polythene sheeting uh, secure. Then I've got these, um, what are they called? They're called cable clips or uh, pipe clips. And these, there's going to be two here, two in the middle and two on the end on either side. And then the uh, piping, piping is going to bend, clip into those clips and then form a hoop. What I'll, I'll do is um, get the, the cable clips in first. I think that's the first thing to do. Once I've done that, I'll secure the outer frame. Um, uh, sorry, the inner frame, and I'll do that for, I'll make two, so I'll do that for both of them. And then once I've done that, I'll get the um, pipes put in place, um, wrap the polythene sheeting around, and then um, secure that, and then put the outer frame on. And that should be it, really. Okay, so there's a the cable clips all clipped in. Um, just note, in this case, I've uh, not put them right to the edge. I've left about um, just under an inch um, from the end, and then I've put them in. And the reason is, when I uh, secure um, the uh, short edge of the frame into the long edge, I'm gonna need some space for the nails to go through. I don't wanna obviously knock, you know, knock the nails that are in there or mess that up. Okay, so there's the first uh, inner frame put together. Just bear in mind, if you're using nails like I have, um, there's a very high chance that the wood could split like that. Um, obviously, in this case, it won't matter because we'll have um, the outer frame, you know, holding that all together. But obviously, you know, if you have a power drill, it's a lot better because it, uh, you know, there's no not as much pressure on the wood. So I'm, you know, that's I'm guessing why it split. But anyway, so that's all done. So those are the hoops that we'll put the plastic over and then we'll have that going at the top, almost like a little ridge pole, just to give it a bit of stability over the um, places in between the hoops. Okay, so I've got the polythene sheeting kind of lined up more or less where it needs to be. I'm just gonna put a, a staple in there every so often. Okay, 
Okay, so once um, you've stapled it in all the way around, so I had to fold it over over here just so it doesn't bunch up. So I've stapled it in all around. I won't trim that off just yet. First, I'm gonna get uh, the outer frame uh, put on, and then from there I'll trim it all off, all the excess. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you can see why I put this here. It kind of just neatens up the edge a bit, and you can also then use that to fold the polythene over and secure it again. So I've just put some staple, uh, use a staple gun to put those in there. Um, the whole thing is is really lightweight. Um, it can be moved around wherever you want. You could actually even use that and put it inside a polytunnel um, just to have its own little sort of microclimate. Um, so it'll need to go somewhere in the garden that's protected from wind because it'll it'll blow over um, if if it isn't protected very well. You know, you could put some bricks around the edge just to to make it a bit heavier. But you know, it's not perfect. It doesn't look you know 100% neat, but it'll do the job and. So I've only made one, I'm going to make another one. Um, both of those together probably cost me about £30 once they're both built. Um, and they, you know, they'll do the job and that's the most important thing. So if you haven't got space, um, one of these would be perfect. Again, you don't have to build it, you can buy them for about £40 up to £100 depending on, you know, how fancy it is. So the more expensive ones like this, have stainless steel hoops and they you know incredibly good quality but you know it's a lot of money um compared to 15 pounds for one I i've never actually started growing seeds so early in the season um it's been a bit of a painful lesson because i've you know a lot of the seeds haven't haven't grown because it hasn't been warm enough and if you think of that polytunnel that we have at the back you know it's quite big so this is a, a big volume that needs to be warmed up by the little sun that we have had or the warmth that we have had. Uh, whereas with this, it, it's, the, it's a lot smaller. So there's a, a lot less air to warm up. So it'll warm up quicker and probably stay warm for a bit longer. So I'm just learning as I go really with this kind of thing. Normally I would only start planting seeds in sort of um, May or June or, or I've bought um, seedlings already grown. So I've never had that kind of problem before. Um, saying that things are doing really well. Just as an update, uh, these are doing okay. Um, we've had a bit of frost, so not all of them have, have survived. Uh, the ones here in the polytunnel are doing really, really well. Um, you can see there the cabbage is starting to uh, not feel so sorry for itself. That's doing pretty good. Um, our first little bean sprouts come out. And um, I don't know if you guys remember the video about making um, nettle fertilizer. Um, I'll put a link in the card um, so you can go and watch that video. But it's been a couple of weeks now and it is definitely ready. I used some of it uh, last night to water the plants. And it, but that's it there. It's really thick and gloopy. But I might, well, I'm gonna try and remove as much of this green stuff as possible and just leave the liquid. Um, and that should keep us that should keep us going for quite a while in terms of fertilizer. The way you would use it is um, you wouldn't use that clean neat by itself. Um, I take a watering can and just a, you know an old cup that we don't use, and I fill the cup about halfway up, um, and then mix it with a whole watering can. Even a bit less, a bit less than half a cup should do it. You know it's really really strong stuff, and you don't want to put too much on the plants but also you know just a small bit every now and then will last you a lot longer um, and as soon as that starts getting a bit low I'll go and um, find some more stinging nettles and make some more okay so that's it for this um, this week I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful um, if you decide to build one of these it'll be great to see your finished result um, I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram um, all those will be all the links for those will be in the description so send us a tweet or comment on our Facebook page um, it'll be cool to see what you guys have done um, please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and share this video with your friends we will see you guys next week cheers